Good guys, it's me Lord Tomo here again with another let's play. Well not another, it's a continuation of the one that I did before which was Streets of Rage, yes it was Streets of Rage. As you can see we're back in my room and this time the sun is out. I literally just came back from work and it is so cold right now, you have no idea. And because it's cold I have a hoodie on and to embody my character that is Adam. You know I'm trying to be gangster. Yo. <laughs> so lame. Okay, so we're back in my room. We have a whole bunch of stuff. We have a trophy. We have the game that we're going to be playing. We have my questionable speakers, to say the least. We have my TV and we have various other things. And yes, there are my comics on the floor. Because I don't care about Sonic. It's over. It is... <coughs> it is... It is more than over. I'm over Sonic. It's it's I'm Mario now. It's Team Mario. Go Mario and go Waluigi and nobody likes Sonic, so <laughs> let's continue, shall we? Let's go to my previous game. The countries shall go in. I have to blow into it. Okay. Let's do this. So last time we left off I was Adam and I'm on stage three which means I'm going to go in and kick ass. I'm currently in the stadium. Now, unlike my previous one, where I literally was just uh, mumbling words, and I'm probably going to do that again, um, I'm going to be talking about a topic. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but I am a security guard. Surprises there. I'm picking up a bat. I am a black man on a mission! Ah, oh, not really. I'm gonna kick my way through life. But yeah, I'm a security guard. Um, some call me a bouncer. Uh, I started uh, being a bouncer or doorman, depending on which part of the world you're from, at the age of 18. Um, I'm currently 30 now, so I've been doing it for roughly about... Man, I don't know my maths right now. I'm... Hold on. Let me... <sighs> Why did you do that, mate? Why did you do that? So yeah, I've been doing security for roughly about 12 years. I've been a bouncer for about 20, uh, not 20 years, 12 years. Which has its stories, its pros and cons. Obviously, there are some stories I cannot exclusively talk about because it involves profanities, to say the least. And I'm trying to make this channel a little friendly for all ages. Um, those who probably do know me, I do drop the odd profanity here and there. And I don't want to be that guy that, you know, just swears left, right, and center in his channel. Um, I can't control myself uh, vocally, but I don't want to be that guy, you know what I mean? I don't want to be the one that says, F this, F that, and F you, so pluxed, oh, in the face, hold on, gotta do, oh, I love doing that. And, um, yeah, I don't want to be that sort of person, but um, in terms of my personal life, Obviously, as you age, you tend to basically, you know, develop who you are individually and all that sort of stuff. And uh, I'm not a chronic uh, swearer. <laughs> I don't have to drop the F-bomb left, right, and center. But sometimes, you know when you get passionate? Yes, we're doing a discussion about me and swearing. Because why not? Let's talk about swearing by not swearing. That's that's me. But you know how there are some people who are chronic swearers where they have to drop, an, you know, the, uh, an F-bomb every second syllable? I, don't, I never understood those sort of people. I get the passion, um, that sort of stuff. But when it comes to me, particularly, hold on, hold on. Bring up my brother from another mother. Boom shakalaka. But yeah, to sum up the whole swearing thing, I'm literally not that sort of guy who swears a lot. I do periodically. Oh, really, mate? You know what? Feminism has taught me to suplex you. Feminism for the wind. You want your 77 cents for the dollar? Fight me then. <laughs> Alright, if anybody knows anything about feminism, that's kind of their staple go-to about the whole 77 cents for every dollar a man makes or something. Which I find pretty weird. I think. Anyway. But let's harken back to the whole security thing. I'm going to pick up my knife because black man with a knife. <clears throat> oh, yeah. So yeah, let's go back to security. So yeah, um, that is my primary job. That's always security has always been the job where I made extra money. 
and um, it's it's it really pays well. You know, I'm, I'm a pretty big tall guy, and I do have a very uh, questionable face, to say the least. A face that basically only a mother can love. I can acknowledge, <laughs> to say the least. But um, look, oh, when I'm not smiling or laughing, I do have a somewhat menacing face, to say that. Oh, mate, really? I do have somewhat menacing face, to say the least. And, you know, to each their own, there are those who are born, you know, good looking, and there are those who are born, you know, not the best looking people out there, but you make do with what you have. And I've come to terms with the fact that with me particularly, I was born with a face that uh, that is suited for an industry which favours those who look like they're going to... Oh, did I die? Okay. Oh, did I? Well, there's my first continue. That's alright. But yeah. Uh, I've come to terms with the face that I have. It's a face only a mother would love, but, you know, I've got a big personality. That's my defense. It's always my defense. Nah, but... Oh, come on, come on. There you go. Can you do something? No, it's the other game. Um, but yeah. Um, it also helps the fact that I'm a pretty big guy. Like, physically, as in... I'm about... Two meters tall. Two-ish meters tall. Oh, is that a boss already? Yeah, mate. Yeah, let me let me do break the. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, there we go. But um, yeah, I'm about two meters tall. What's that? Like six, six four feet. I think that's what it's for. But I'm a pretty tall guy. For Australia, it's about uh, a meter ninety, I think. Um, for Americans, I think I'm about a meter, uh, about six four. So I'm a pretty tall guy. So. You know, and uh, yes, for anybody asking, all my uh, bouncer friends that pretty much <laughs> look like me, uh, they all know that I like Sonic. You know, you know if there's one, if there's one, honestly, if there's one lesson that I could give anybody is just continue enjoying your hobby, regardless of what it is. If it's Sonic, if it's collecting stamps, if it's video games, you know, um, if you're passionate about it, just continue playing it. I'm con just continue just doing it. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just like. It's who you are, right? So everybody that I've ever come across, you know, in general conversation, uh, they generally do know that I do like Sonic, and they're more fascinated by the fact that I have a massive collection, and we have a woman that's in a black dominatrix. Yowza! Wow, wow. Um, but yeah, when people find out that I like Sonic and have a massive collection, they're pretty, they're pretty shocked, uh, but they're pretty impressed after a while. You just have to be convincing in your argument in terms of why you do what you do. You don't even have to prove yourself to anybody. Um, just enjoy what you enjoy what you want, you know. Um, my ex, one of my exes anyway, um, she... Ooh, did I get a life? Yes! One of my exes, um, she was a bit astonished when I told her. I was like, yeah, I collect some stuff. I was like, oh yeah, you collect the old periodic... Like, no, 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 I, I'm, this is... You know, there are those who travel the world. I, I like collecting memorabilia and all that stuff. And she's like, no. Yeah, so. So a lot of people who who know me know that I like Sonic with a passion. Generally speaking, this is true. Generally speaking, if I'm talking to somebody and it turns out in the... Hold on, hold on. No. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so what was that? Generally speaking, when I'm... You son of a... Anyway, generally speaking, I'm the sort of guy that if the conversation goes south on their end, oh, I like to embrace various different conversations, you know, like you you talk to me, you, oh, did I do that? Yes, I did. Um, but yeah, if you talk to me, I don't know, uh, about Gridiron or something about Mario or, or Zelda, whatever the case may be, and I don't know anything about it, I tend to engage, you know, if, if it's if it's something to talk about, you know, whatevs. Um, I remember I spoke to a guy who collected stamps, like some of the rarest stamps you could ever imagine, and I know nothing about stamps, or other than just, you know, you just post stuff with it, right? But, you know, he, he, he seemed a bit, I wouldn't say nervous, he, he seemed a bit, you know, uh, questionable, not questionable, he, he seemed like, sort of, he probably thought that I didn't really care, you know, um, about stamps. I mean, let's be real, right? Not a lot of people really are into stamps, collecting um, I personally am not, but the thing is, when someone's passionate about something, r regardless of what it is, I want to give them the time of day to actually, ex you know, let them talk about it, because, ooh, another life, yeah, yeah, that could have helped, um, 
I like when people talk about their hobbies, whatever the case may be, you know, it, it's, it's, um, because it's something new, it's something exciting, it's something not a lot of people know about, um, I would, I would hope that, you know, people have the same appreciation when I talk about Sonic, and to be honest, I've never met a person that hasn't, so that's always been a plus, but yeah, this guy, he spent, we spent like, oh, probably a good two hours, I'd say, um, him, you know, just talking about his stamp collection and the very stamps, um, that he's gotten, and one of the rarest stamps, apparently one of the most rarest stamps is like, is worth like millions, and I'm like, what, a stamp, you know, but you know, it just goes to show you, there's, there's a, there's, you know, if there are collectors for almost everything, you know, and um, cars, stamps, Sonic, whatever the case may be, you, you just got to find your, your thing, you know, um, it's definitely always been, ye I've got a bottle, I'm going to drink, sorry, I'm just getting into it. But it's definitely been something that, uh, what am I saying? Oh yeah. So he he spoke he spoke about you know his stamp collection for a good um, one hour I'd say you know then we had to obviously do our own thing and whatnot. But it was I really enjoyed that conversation simply because it was it was something that I never knew anything about, and it's always something new that comes into the table, right? So just like pinball. You know, I thought pinball is just like literally a gun, but it's all about maintenance and, and all that fun stuff. And yeah, now let's. Oof, I love when I do that. Ah, oh. now let's go back to my job. Now, I think I might have mentioned this, but yes, yeah, security is my part-time job. I started that when I was young, um, just to pick up money when I was in school. Um, after after I left school, I joined the company. I was actually with Samsung Australia, so the tech division, I was doing that, and, uh, boom, boom, shakalaka, but yeah, I was, I was working for Samsung HQ, um, Samsung, I don't know if you guys know, they do TVs, laptops, everything, so, <coughs> what I did was, hold on, let me kick his ass, I don't like being touched, I'm a man with power, I'm like Beyonce, I'm a single lady, <laughs> But yeah, as I was saying, um, I'm fighting a boss. But yeah, um, Samsung is pretty much headquarters, the major headquarters in, is in Korea, obviously. But they have headquarters in various... Are you serious, mate? You know, I'm going to do that. How, how do you like that? How about I bring out my best friend, Mr. Bazooka? Oh yeah, so Samsung has headquarters all over. They have one in the US, they have one in Australia, and of course... They have been ones in various other countries. I, I worked for Samsung for about eight years. Eight years. I moved up the ranks. I was the customer service guy. I was the whole, welcome to Samsung. My name is Thomas. How can I help you? I was that guy. Then I moved to um, Escalation. What? Then I moved to Escalations. Then I moved to Case Managers. Then I moved to Level 2 Support. It was it was fascinating. I was, I was going up the ranks, um, to say the least. Um, like I said, I was there for about... Serious, mate bring him out again but yeah I was there for about yeah seven eight years uh, I enjoyed it I still do I mean for the most part I was actually made redundant from Samsung uh, business restructuring which is a technical term for they want to save money and they sent everything to the Philippines let's save that for now but yeah so they moved everything to the Philippines and I was paid out pretty well for the eight years that I was there, so which is awesome. And that was, was of course the time when I was able to basically, um, you know, save up deposit, purchase a house, all the fun stuff. So this small little cramp room, it was more or less a rental. Um, it is still a rental to an extent, but um, uh, the new house is going to be way much bigger and all that fun. So yeah, pretty much I was, was started security when I was 18. I moved into Samsung as a full-time job, Monday to Friday job. Still doing security to make extra money, of course. When you're collecting Sonic stuff, you know, you got to make extra money and all that sort of stuff. So I was doing that. Then I was for Samsung for about eight years. I moved up the ranks. I think I was level three tech. So I was doing tech for mobile phones. I was doing tech, tech support. Not with customers like we're talking about email. We're talking about the, the, the upper echelon of technical inquiries I was via emails. And I had to do with VIP customers. Customers like, you know, we're talking about the ones that they bring in the cash, right? So I, I did that. I did that for laptops as well, TVs, Blu-ray players, cameras. I did it for so much, you know. I started there when I was 
when I was entry level and then I make myself up then of course I had to offshore the job I was paid out you don't want to know my dramas on that the best stories I have is working in security because security is where it's at but I don't know let me know do you guys want to hear those sort of stories I might drop the occasional f-bomb yeah I was also a stripper once upon a time just kidding <laughs> me a stripper yeah <laughs> And anyway, look, I'm going to leave it for now. I'm going to definitely continue that. I think there's another two more levels, so this is probably going to be a three-parter. It's like I said, these Let's Plays, it's not do anything. It's just me to talk about life, I guess, in general. And just play games. Old Sega games. Come on, you can't go wrong with that. I'm hoping you can't go wrong with that. It beats Mario. Nobody likes Mario. Everybody hates Mario. <laughs> I'm probably going to annoy a few of my subscribers with that. Nah, Mario's alright. I just don't like him as much as Sonic. I don't have a relationship with Mario. Mario's the sort of person that you see them on the street, you wave, you make, you make small talk and you just walk away saying, I don't know who that person is. That's who Mario is to me. <laughs> to be fair, I do like the Donkey Kong series. I really, really like the Donkey Kong series. So, anyway guys, thank you so much for checking out this Let's Play again. Of course, if you want me to talk about anything or just enjoy this for what it is, it's Definitely something to mix it up. Uh, it it's becomes rather monotonous doing the, the same, you know, um, uh, what's the wording? It becomes monotonous doing the same, you know, reviews of Sonic stuff over. I like to mix things up, you know, for you guys and especially for me. Mix it up, but keep it in the same family, keep it in the same home. The home being Sega and Sega being Sonic and Sonic being every other Sega game that I'm ever going to play. <coughs> of course, speed on, take care, and of course, till next time. Peace.